and welcome back to Twin Flames Between Worlds podcast. My name is Tabitha. And I'm Liesl. And yes, we're back for episode four of A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. Whoop, whoop. Hello, welcome back. <laughs> so we're going to be talking through chapters 16 through 21. So we're going we're gonna to spice it up a little bit since it's the mid-season. Uh, since we're kind of, this will be halfway probably through the book. We're going to be discussing chapters 16 through 21 instead. Where things uh, start really getting interesting. This is, I will tell you, and I told you this when we read this the first time. This was when I was hooked. Mm-hmm. Like, this, these chapters were 100%. I was loving Sarah. Like, I loved everything up until a point, but... This this was definitely my moment of, oh my gosh, I love this author. <laughs> so yeah, I'm so excited. Us, yes, Callan Mai, ladies and gentlemen. Callan Mai. It's a so we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll get there eventually, but yes, let's start yes. with chapter 16. So yeah, chapter 16. So this is right after the Naga attack and Tamlin saving Feyre. And so <laughs> so Alice is giving Feyre a bath. And so we get this first sort of alice Feyre talk. Alice um, is so sweet sweet she's she's sweet but at the same time like what were you thinking she's not gonna put up with dumb shit <laughs> the voice seems like very much the voice of reason mm-hmm. um Sphera starts to talk to her about you know what the surreal's warning was if people like if the fae start to go over the wall da 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 and she's very reluctant she doesn't seem willing to discuss anything she's like mm-hmm. don't talk about it it'll bring like bad juju if you start talking about it bad juju um, but we see Feyre kind of standing up to her in this moment like finally after how many pages has it been 140 she's she's like no i want answers like you guys keep around the bush i want answers to this <laughs> alice keeps like turning her forward and then favorite keeps turning around back to face her again it's like dang this is just gonna, a- like this could just keep going <laughs> This is every time you try to put my hair up. Yeah, true. <laughs> it very much is. And I keep having to adjust your head to look straight forward. <laughs> I can't stop moving. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I mean, if you want a crooked braid, that's fine. <laughs> I know. So it almost seems like th- this is like kind of a small thing, but she says, the less you know, the better. Let Lord Tamlin deal with it. It's like Alice somehow knows that that Feyre knows that Tamlin is Lord now. And so she's like, okay, well, we'll, sh- we'll just call him Lord Tamlin then. <laughs> Sure, that works out. So we finally get some interesting, some stuff about Alice. So we get some feedback from her. So she she does have a family. Her sister and her mate, so her sister's mate, were murdered 50 years ago, leaving two youngling boys behind. And so Alice has to take care of these boys. And so they were starts thinking, oh yeah, is that maybe why there was children's books in the library? Were, oh, were those the kind of sparkling creatures that I saw? I don't know. Yeah, because why other reason would Tamlin have? children's books unless like they were his own maybe i mean yeah i guess so i guess i wasn't really thinking too much about it i I think i was like oh i guess that makes sense but she says that they're not there they're somewhere else which is so ambiguous it's like okay you just don't want to tell me that's fine Mm -hmm. (laughs) so she also finds out that the lesser fairies the lesser fairies can breed like rabbits basically they can have a bunch of kids but the high fae it's kind of hard for them to have kids and uh so they cherish their young they call them younglings they cherish their young more than they would like the lesser fairies would Mm -hmm. so it's like so yeah because if you have something that's so rare like you want to hold on to it you want to protect it because it's precious as alice says like you know high fate young are precious Mm -hmm. it it makes sense it's also like something important to clock because i was thinking to myself oh yeah that's gonna come into play Mm -hmm. in terms of you know how much they care and da 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 um yeah 100 percent. and so so there's a little bit of you know favor trying to come at alice but then alice coming back at her and there's there's a moment of okay we're not so different after all Mm -hmm. i understand why you like i don't want to you know deny or what did she say i don't want to question your dedication to them right just i was kind of blowing up at you for no reason (laughs) yeah because i feel Um, like in a way favors had it where people have questioned her dedication to her own family so that's definitely kind of along the lines that like what you just said of hey we're not actually that different like we've been through different stuff but at the same time it's made us pretty similar it's a point of compromise and contact between like two quote-unquote races of sorts Mm-hmm. Uh, but the funny little quip at the end that I just have to say is uh, huh, the next time that fool Lucian gives you advice on how to trap the cereal you come to me dead chickens <laughs> my sagging ass all you need to do is offer it a new robe and it would have groveled at your feet I love Alice <laughs> I know she was she, she's definitely like my favorite character so far in terms of like side characters mm-hmm. because and I'm gonna say this in the future again but I think Sarah does such a great job 
well, but making a making the side characters that like we still care about them too. It's like, yeah, well, of course we care about Alice's kids and her life, and um, it makes it more of an important character than just kind of a two D. Oh, I'm just the maid character. But yeah, so we get another. Okay, I did want to point this out. I don't know what it is with Sarah. I love in this specific in these specific in sorry this specific section how it's just so many parallels to the the chapters before. Mm-hmm. There's there's so many dinner scenes and this one is just kind of the catalyst into building that Tamlin Faye relationship. Mm-hmm. And it's totally a different atmosphere going in. She knows that Tamlin's a high lord, so I think she's respecting him a little bit more. Maybe mm-hmm. a little bit scared of him, but also and the thing is she's not really scared of him. It's more like wait, he's a high lord and he's been treating me decently this whole t- I'm shocked. <laughs> I mean, and I think she's also shocked of the fact that she's been like talking shit to him and about him. Directly. Like he's mm-hmm. one of the most powerful beings in Perthian. And she's just been like talking shit to him and being like, no, fuck off, basically. <laughs> and then like I can just from like the last episode she told me with the serial, she's just like, Oh shit. I've been talking shit about this guy. Um, so he could have killed me this entire time. So why didn't he? Mm-hmm. It's so actually kind of sweet that I, I always like it when like someone with power like doesn't like shove it in your face. Yeah. Tamlin definitely is giving off that vibe that he he has the power, but he doesn't like to use it in a way that mm-hmm. kind of forces or dominates over somebody else. Almost know? like he doesn't want it. I mean, he said he doesn't want the land, so maybe like the power came with the lands or something, came with the title. Right, right. so <laughs> with this different atmosphere, she's going into this dinner, she like brings up a funny, she finally brings up the, oh, well, you know, because uh, Lucian, what is, he, he like compliments her and she's like, oh, I thought fairies couldn't lie. And then they both burst out laughing and are like, wait, what? What's that malarkey? Of course we can lie. And so she's like, what? <laughs> and they realize that she's not joking about it. And it's like, no, we can. Li-. It's like, welcome to the crash course and everything you have been taught is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> great thanks so it's like so fairies can lie obviously i i kind of thought that was kind of bullshit but getting it confirmed was a different story yeah and like um, in the in the past how would the humans have like known that the fae weren't lying when they said they couldn't lie right and i mean i mean lucian kind of does say it. it's like oh we told them back then so that they'd actually believe us when we you know bargained with them or something and it makes sense why they needed to do that to make the humans trust them but goddamn wow they're being like spread a bunch of lies um yeah and now so Bear now, is like she doesn't know who to trust so now she but the thing is like the questioning thing doesn't last too long like she's kind of like oh yeah but tamlin kind of shuts that down really early he's like we never willingly lied to you you know what do you say we never use your misinformation against you and so like, it's what like what does he mean by like willingly like does he unwillingly lie yeah that kind of like kind of brings up kind of a question mark in terms of wait so so now she's questioning what is lie and what's truth da, da, da. Mm-hmm. but so on top of the lie thing the iron doesn't do a lick of damage to them either so only ash can hurt them great so that's well, not least, okay at least it wasn't all a lie at least ash actually does do shit right well and she knew that because of the her application when she killed andres <laughs> <Sad. laughs> so i think what's so funny about that that sarah brings up is she's looking at tamlin and she's looking at how kind he is and she's like are th- these are the high lords that's supposed to that are supposed to sacrifice virgins <laughs> Um, and he's, she's like, no, Tamlin is a perfect representation of what the children of the blessed preached about. True. And it's like, I think that sort of makes her nervous because she's like, everybody thought those people were zealots. And then she finds out that if anything, they were more right about the Fae than, and no, everybody else was. Although they didn't really have any genuine like proof at the time. So they kind of were just zealots. But they technically were a little bit right. Which Um, is unbelievable. So as she's learning this, I think it's so funny that what's different also about this dinner is that Lucian just yeets the fuck out of there. <laughs> he just, just like bails on the rest of dinner and leaves them alone. Oh my and word. It's like Lucian. But the thing is, what's different about that though, is before when he left, she wasn't comfortable being there with him. And now it's more of a like, it's not that she's scared to be alone with him. It's more of a, well, I don't really know what to do now. <laughs> 
right kind of feeling but he asked her how she was doing i think this is really cute i don't know about you but it's definitely very sweet it's like he saved her and then like i mean honestly that's Mm -hmm. like a very well yeah like a human thing in a way like in our world we would say oh that's a very human thing to like care about someone after they've just been attacked by monsters Um, Mm -hmm. which i think in a way can also still be applied here it's like just a very normal thing and it's very sweet that he's caring about her like he yeah he saved her but he's not like rubbing it in his in her face that he saved her he's actually caring about her and making sure she's okay i think what's even best about this is that he's surprised at his concern <laughs> in the yeah. description he's like he, she she notices how he's even surprised by him asking that <laughs> and i think that makes him a little bit human-esque and like it brings out his humanity i definitely and, imagine him like just thinking like in his mind of just like hmm she looks okay and then all of a sudden like just asking hey are you okay and <laughs> then in his mind just being like wait did i say that out loud or just in my head yeah 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 it's like the, oh I, wait i said that out loud oh damn it damn it okay, now i have to uh, actually continue with this conversation I, also love how, I mean obviously he's mad about her going to look after the surreal but i think mm-hmm. what's okay about that is that he cuts his own face when she talks about it and, yeah like claws pop out and it like it's his face <laughs> yeah he's like just hand on his like holding up his chin and then suddenly like it shoots out like i imagine like he's posed like this or whatever and it just shoots out and like <laughs> slices his face and he's just like because they're laughing about it it's like a human girl caught the surreal oh wow and (laughs) i think what's so good about that is tamlin is being very genuine about it like she is at every turn she's looking for i mean that's her guardedness nature she's looking at every turn for him to make fun of her but i don't think he's just so surprised and impressed yeah like and he finally does kind of say that he's like no i'm not saying that to be you know an idiot here i'm saying that because i'm impressed that you cat you caught the surreal you killed two of the naga on your own Mm -hmm. and you like made it out i'm i'm just i'm just shocked and impressed so she's clearly not just some human girl that he that randomly ran into and killed one of his sentries Mm -hmm. (laughs) like she can actually you know back up her skill she can walk the walk after talking the talk although she doesn't really want to talk the talk she just walks the walk (laughs) right and so you know that kind of calms her down a little bit and then and then we find out that he looked in the trash for her like bunches of words the words (laughs) she wrote down he wanted to know what she was writing and i think it's so cute he's like you love them very much don't you i wonder if your family realizes it that everything you've done wasn't about the promise to your mother or for your sake but for theirs Hmm. and of course she's getting defensive again she's like like leave me alone i don't want your help and he's like oh he's like you clearly don't need my help but i'm offering not because I think you need it, but because that's an offer. Which again is a very I think if I were in that situation I definitely would have like felt shocked for a moment because mm-hmm. to be able to hear it's like, oh yeah, like I know you don't need my help. I'm still offering it though. It's like, wait, really? Yeah. Like I don't know if I like would have taken it up immediately I'd still probably feel similar to if I couldn't read. Well, first of all, we wouldn't be in this position in the first place. But... <laughs> You're reading this book, yeah. Although, honestly, if I think I still would have like listened to the audiobook. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think I still would have gotten into that. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> Um, mm-hmm. I think I still would have been like a little like insecure about accepting the help but mm-hmm. like if he kept up these compliments of like oh yeah I know you don't need my help and then here's the reasons why one two three I'd be like okay fine I guess you can sit around and help me <laughs> <laughs> I guess you can carry the books babe <laughs> maybe in the beast moment of just like on the stacks like pulling books off and putting them on a stack and him just like carrying mm-hmm. them <laughs> I have it highlighted they're fools fools for not seeing it which dude that I don't know maybe because of when I read it but that hit me a lot because he's very much calling out her family like they didn't realize what a gem they had Mm -hmm. and that they now have lost I mean literally they've lost her (laughs) Mm -hmm. and there's like there's no pity in his eyes and like they're getting closer and this is definitely when I'm starting to feel the romantic tension (laughs) Mm -hmm. there's Um, something starting to bloom there for sure and he even says like he's like I I want to be your friend and I think that's Mm -hmm. what I think that's what made it such a cool romance to me because he's not necessarily saying like yeah let's go bone now (laughs) you know i save you let's go do this or you know kiss or whatever like he's saying i really want to talk to you i really want to be your friend Mm -hmm. and i think that threw her off a little bit too (laughs) yeah um because like if we think about it favor didn't really have any friends in the human world oh no not really like she had isaac but he wasn't really a friend he was uh, (laughs) he was like a friends with benefits but only the benefits (laughs) 
And even then, they weren't good benefits. No, true. They literally sorry. were just fuck buddies without being I the buddies. Mean, I'm sorry, Isaac. <laughs> Thanks for helping her to this point. Uh, yeah, but uh, we're moving on a little bit past you. But I like how he brings this up because this is finally when I went, aha, I was right. Because he brings up the whole friends thing and he says, you know, 500 years ago, enough fairies were friends with mortals that they went to war on their behalf. Mm-hmm. And Aira is blown away. She's like, what? He's like, thinking what we were all thinking. Like, the humans couldn't have survived without the Fae's help. No. So. <laughs> Thank you, Tamlin, for clarifying that. Because so the apparently fact- Feyre was not seeing it. Yeah, so the fact that the humans fought with some of the fairies in the war. Mm-hmm. So we also find out he was a child at the time, so this means he's like 500 years old. But he still didn't <laughs> fight in the war. No, he was a he was a child. He's But he would have fought for the humans. He, he makes that pretty clear. He would have fought against tyranny, slavery, all of that. So, so sweet. A plus. Great. Good job. Um, Gold star. I definitely think this is one of those moments, though, where they're like, they're going really good. And then all of a sudden, the guy says one thing and she says, oh, wait, wait, what? <laughs> So Hamlin tells Farah that he altered her family's memories and that they that they don't remember her getting captured. They think that she's at some that or that she's well cared for and that she's at some other place and or that she's yeah, that she's at a wealthy aunt's house. Like far, far away. Yeah. And so that they that they will flee at the first sign of danger. So they have like some sort of trigger in their minds if they hear something going on that they need to flee away from the wall. It's kind of like that moment of like, yeah, like, thank you. I just want to say thank you so much for taking care of my family. And he's just like, yeah, don't worry. I wiped their memories. And she's like, wait, what? What? <laughs> you wiped their memories? So- it's like, no, I just actually, no, not wiped. Sorry, I misspoke. I rearranged. They have no idea where you are. <laughs> Yeah, I I mean, obviously, of course, at first, she's like, you altered their memories. And then, but the thing is, it slowly turns from anger to, I mean, honestly, I would have asked him to do it. If I was in that position, I probably would have asked him to do it. And then, and then, of course, she gets sad because she's like, now I really don't have any ties. They don't, they're not going to remember me or they're better off. Yeah, they're definitely not like coming after her, she realizes. And it's sad because even Tamlin tries to tell her like, your father would, he, because Tamlin other reason for altering their memories was because he knew that her father would try to go after her but she doesn't think she thinks he wouldn't have tried regardless but he is determined that he would have and i yeah. and i like that he tells her that and is trying to make her believe it yeah because at least he believes it so it's she's left with thinking like well what what is left for me to do my task is complete they're safe they're da 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 like i have no purpose <laughs> Time to make a new purpose, Feyre. And so as she's finally, like, thinking about all this, she just blurts out, paint. I want to paint. Imagine if you're having, like, this serious conversation of, like, trust me, your father would have come after you if he remembered. And then she's just like, paint. <laughs> it's like, wait, huh? Wait, change <laughs> the topic, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so, but he, you know, she finally asks about her passion. And so I'm also happy that she's wanting to go after some hobby that she likes to do. He's like, mm-hmm. he's so happy about this. He's like, of course, of course. Like, outside on the on the roof, you can paint in the gardens. You can paint anyway. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> he's just happy that she wants to do something. And he's, and like, he's like, I'm like, I'm sure you've like, seen the gallery and stuff. And she's like, wait, what? <laughs> Where's that? She, she gets like all Belle excited. Like, oh, there's a gallery? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, uh, the library to Belle is like the gallery to Feyre. Oh, vice 100%. versa. <laughs> 100%. And he's like smiling at her. And then we get the nice, their bonding moment. Because as soon as he smiles at her, broadly without restraint, I have this has- highlighted. Isaac had never smiled at me. Like Isaac mm-hmm. had never made made my breath catch just a little bit it's like mm, romance is a brewing i'm just saying mm-hmm. you like and Feyre you knew that you didn't love isaac and part of that he never smiled at you like that so now that like this male is smiling at you like this hmm? i mean obviously i haven't been in many relationships but i mm-hmm. think one thing i can definitely like agree with is i don't know when you're seeing like your significant other my boyfriend whatever just smile and so genuine I don't know. It's so beautiful to me. And it I think like a good smile is also a very attractive quality, mm-hmm. especially someone who can laugh and have fun and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, I digress with that. <laughs> <laughs> a good um, digression. So so then we get to chapter 17 where she uh, so we get the second nightmare um, mm-hmm. scenario. So she's having a nightmare about the surreal and the Naga and a pale faceless woman dragging her blood red nails across her throat. And she kept asking for 
my name. But every time I tried to speak, my blood bubbled out of the shallow wound on my neck, choking me. Wow. (laughs) Wow. That's very gruesome and very, very specific. (laughs) So yeah, again, SJM being gruesome as always. I love it. (laughs) Um, Terrifying. Why does Faber have like all of these god awful, like vivid nightmares? It's terrifying. Well, the first thing I was thinking of when I heard it was a woman, I was like, okay, to me, the only person it could be is a she person, right? Because Mm -hmm. I'm thinking it's like, oh yeah, it has to be the she, but also why does she care about names? Why does, you know, this matter? You know, I I don't really know what's going on, but it would make sense if it was the Mm -hmm. she that we're talking about. My first train of thought definitely was, well, okay, I won't say that it was the she that keeps getting brought up, but Mm -hmm. I was thinking that the, um, this woman in the dream would come in later in the book. Oh, okay. So like a potential of like, it'll be this person and this other she like for I, for some reason I didn't connect that they potentially could be the same person hmm. um, I can see that but I definitely was like okay this person like considering like the vivid dreams that she's been having like I wouldn't even be surprised if it ended up like this person came in or aspects of this dream coming into real life yeah you, you need to well, also it's also it would make sense if this is a potential villain because if she's having bad nightmares about it oh it makes sense um, exactly and she's a human in the in the fairy world now so you don't know what's going to affect her differently or you know what magic could be or like coming visions her. could be a thing that is a normal thing in the fairy world we don't know yeah so yeah we get one of the more uh gruesome chapters of this part and i think of the whole book you know so far so as she's waking up she she hears someone screaming from the front from the front hall or hear like really bad animal list screaming where she's like oh yeah this is like sounds like someone being murdered and so she sees that it's one of the lesser fairies with stumps and he's like perfu- per- or stumps on the back of his like on his back and he's like bleeding profusely mm-hmm. uh, so the one thing to remember is that or that through this whole big monologue that she has he doesn't have a mask on and apparently through Tamlin's talking he was he was a summer court fairy who was left at the border mm-hmm. her first um, look at another court's fairies yeah because also we see that people from so from this court they don't have a mask on so mm-hmm. that's a little bit interesting that they don't um and so what we get to find out is that the uh the she woman or whatever ripped off his wings not cut them off ripped them off <laughs> ripped them off or like it they she said it looked like saw marks or something mm-hmm. as if they were slowly ripped off that's like that, wow. i remember reading the scene and i was i actually was tearing up before i even knew what was happening mm-hmm. no mercy well i also okay this was me just being like in full theory mode i was like isn't it interesting that she had the dream and then soon as soon as like that ends there's a summer like this there's a fairy who's bleeding that is from in my mind from the she person mm. like because me i thought it was you know oh textbook it has to be the same person right <laughs> because it happened right after each other but right. again no no i'm just saying that's what i thought in first time i read it mm-hmm. um so Feyre, i think i'm, I'm, I'm kind of proud of her here she's like she wants to help she's like wow no i she wants to get in on it in terms of like no i need to help him and she doesn't mm-hmm. shy away from it and um, she like i think because she hears it screams um and is well seeing all the chaos that's happening and she doesn't feel right just standing there watching as someone's in such pain mm-hmm. and also she's seeing that like they're struggling to hold him down well and also so <laughs> we see um so as she's she's trying to get in there now lucian this is the first time we've seen him like this he freaks out he runs away he throws up on the floor and he just bolts out of there. Ruin a perfectly good flower flower pot. <laughs> That's what you're worried about. <laughs> okay, I'll admit that actually was my first thought when I read the scene and he puked of in the course. pot. I'm like, of why course. the pot? Like, there's already blood on the floor. Just puke on the floor. He, he didn't want, I don't know, that <laughs> was... Then, uh, okay, then I quickly moved on to very quickly of like, wait, why did he puke? Well, because the thing is, we've always seen Lucian as kind of like the calm, rugged, I'm gonna, you know, be smart ass back. And then we just see him in pure terror. Mm-hmm. And it's like, wow, I really don't know what's going on. So finally, Feyre steps in and Tamlin's trying to heal him. And while Feyre is holding him down, and obviously she even says this, she's like, oh, he must be about on the edge of death for me mm-hmm. to be able to hold him down. <laughs> right, because she's a human and he's a giant ass fairy yeah so <laughs> he must be like done for basically mm-hmm. and so obviously the wound the wounds aren't clotting it's a very descriptive and you know haha quote gra- 
graphic audio. I'm going to say it again <laughs> for the for the seventh time this has happened now. <laughs> I think the graphic audio does such a good job of making it so serious and so, I don't know, like it, it's so epic and intense. I, I It totally it got me in the space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. So the wounds aren't clotting. He's basically, you know, he's just waiting to die. And, and so, like fairies, like even the lesser fairies, don't they also have like a healing aspect? Maybe not as strong as the fae, but... They do, but I mean, if you take something so vital, it's almost like chopping a head off, basically. That's true, that's true. If they take something so vital from them, I mean, that's still bleeding. I mean, yeah, that's what I was gonna say, was even the lesser fairies, like, they have a sense of, like, healing power. But if that's Mm -hmm. not even working right now, you know it's bad. The healing can only do so much. Mm -hmm. It's bad, so, you know, Tamlin kind of gives her the, you know, the, how do I say, the surgeon look of, yeah, this is not good. This, he's gonna die. And so she, okay, in this instance, I think it's okay that she lied to him. Mm-hmm. She's like, yeah, you'll get your wings back. You will get them back. Um, You can like, because she's telling him to go peacefully. Don't struggle. Just mm-hmm. go get them back. Leave this world behind because this one tor- took your wings away. So move on to the next one where you'll have your wings again. Mm-hmm. And so Tamlin recites their, I kind of like their prayer. Um, it's very so sweet. It says, cauldron save you, mother hold you, pass through the gates and smell that immortal land of milk and honey fear no evil feel no pain go and enter eternity and i think what i like so much about that is like tamlin well not like about it he's dying but (laughs) appreciate um, about the prayer is that tamlin is is shook i mean obviously you know it's one of his kin i mean all the fairies are you know basically you know a part of each other and so to see somebody die so i think any seeing anybody die so gruesomely is not like a Mm -hmm. a thing that's taken lightly so he's like wavering as he's saying this god and so sad. so the, so we get our first death well i mean besides andres i'm sorry andreas <laughs> our our first kind of in book death yeah in the midst of book death um and so Feyre stays with him she's so she's like in her nighty in the blood barefoot and she stays with him as he's dying or you know he's dead and so i mean she wants to go bury him with tamlin but tamlin's so distraught he needs to do it himself he's like mm-hmm. no because I- literally the the fairy was dumped on his border yeah it it almost seems like it was a message to me yeah that's what i was gonna say that's obviously some kind of message we don't know from who but Mm -hmm. yeah to be like hey hi lord here's a gift for you a screaming fairy it wasn't even a dead body on the border it was a dying fairy i think he feels bad because if he knows it's a message then this poor person got killed just for a message to him and that's Mm -hmm. can be a little bit overwhelming and he Um, clearly is like struggling to figure out what to do and so he probably feels extremely helpless at the moment and i just and she's he is so surprised about how strong she's been and how she's not really freaking out and so he says why did you stay my favorite quote i have highlighted because i wouldn't want to die alone because i'd want someone to hold my hand until the end and a while after that that's something everyone deserves human or fairy it's such Proof a that good not the different yeah because i mean i mean that's just humanity right there that's just like you know and if we're talking about in a modern context it's like we all have one thing we're all trying to be humans we're all trying to survive for our families da 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 we can all find a common ground in that regard um Mm -hmm. sometimes get about the other things that divide us and so i don't know to remember that we all don't want to be alone and how we all want to have family friends da 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 i think remembering that sometimes can humble you a little bit and i think also the um it's at least to me it suggests to back when favorite was always hunting alone in the woods and worrying about Uh running into a fairy or a wolf or something and being Mm -hmm. like would they even like notice if i didn't come back i'm Mm -hmm. basically alone out here so Mm -hmm. it wasn't directly said in when we were reading about her being out there but i felt that's what i felt um happening of like Mm -hmm. Would anyone notice if I didn't come back? Like, would I just die alone out here? Yeah. So it's a, it's definitely a humbling experience. And so I like this chapter just because it's a, you know, it's a little bit of action, but at the same time, it's like a very serious. And I think this is finally when she actually truly apologizes for Andreas and means it. And Mm -hmm. actually, because she's like, she's breaking down. She's like, I'm so sorry. I can't believe there was so much hate in my heart over something that, you know, I didn't even know him. I didn't even 
even, you know, know that this was a thing. It's just a lot. Mm -hmm. And so we just see Tamlin. She finally says it. I'm so proud of her. She what? She finally says it. I'm so proud of her. She finally <laughs> apologizes and like truly means it. Definitely a halfway through the book real realization right there. <laughs> yeah. So especially so that was chapter 17. Wow. So we get to uh we get a whole different vibe the next uh, few days. Mm -hmm. So it's like the next day all the blood is cleaned up da 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 and this time I do want to say it's a such a different vibe because from before you know she didn't want to really meet anybody she is seeking out Tamlin she wants to seek out Tamlin and make sure that he knows how sorry she is mm -hmm. and how thankful she is it's like okay that's totally a change in character for her in terms to him yeah uh, so that's cute <laughs> to me it definitely um, is especially because like not only is she super sorry but but she saw how much he was like putting that burden on himself of burying the fairy. She probably also wants to make sure he's okay, which is super sweet. Which also leads in the whole, okay, well, you kind of, I can kind of see the romance brewing a little bit. Is there a uh, friendship blooming? Okay, yeah, more of a friendship, but I definitely was thinking first time I was reading this, I was like, okay, yeah, I think you're a, uh, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. Some kind of ship is happening. Mm -hmm. And so uh, she finally runs into Tamil and Lucian and they're walking by and I have it highlighted the whole surreal thing again stay with him he will keep me safe and things will get better fine i can do that <laughs> easy enough she's fine she's finally i think accepting what's going on mm -hmm. and uh, not even accepting it just like i don't know being like okay i think i can do this i can do this and so basically they're going they're going out riding they're gonna go somewhere but he's not telling her where they're going that's a little sus <laughs> But at least, like, okay, when I when I heard, though, that, like, Lucian was going with them, I was like, Ugh. they've got a chaperone. Oh, oh, my God. It was like, he said, he said, your supplies won't return until tomorrow and the gallery's being uh, cleaned. My meeting was uh, postponed. She's like, is he rambling? He totally why is, is. Why is he nervous? God, when <laughs> potential, like, relationships, when one, of, one person, like, just starts rambling and, like, is trying to be like, well, so, like, you kind of want to hang out. Do you want to hang out? Because I want to hang out and I am uh, I got nothing happening that kind of stuff it's actually really adorable especially when okay I will say though when like a super ruggedly manly man starts blabbering I'm just sitting there mm -hmm. like god you're cute as fuck it's like oh. mm, this <laughs> might make me want to take you up on that offer it's like, oh, okay, let's go. And so so they're going into this, uh, when they arrived, it's a beautiful, a beautiful glen of just mm -hmm. greenery. And like, this is your kind of place. You're more of the earth girl, so. 100%. <laughs> and so I think Tamlin knew that they both needed a sort of, because she even says it like, oh, I needed this after last night. Because mm -hmm. this is just so beautiful versus that. And so Lucian, Lucian brings like a blanket. And so they're like sitting Oh my god, he is third wheeling so fucking hard. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, I was like, why are you here, my man? Like, oh, why are you here? Again, chaperoning. Again, yeah, but like, I've always been in that third wheel I'd rather scenario. rather wingmanning. I feel bad for him, because like, he's kind of just there, like... I, poor Lucian. Um, yeah, poor Lucian, yeah. And um, so I do want to bring this up, because this isn't... So I told this to Liesl. It's not written in the book, so you wouldn't hear it, but in the graphic audio, as she's lying down and playing with the grass, there is a funny graphic audio moment where like, whoever the director was, pure genius. She <laughs> wrote in there a kind of dialogue between her, like it's like Tamlin says a line and then, or sorry, Lucian says a line and then Tamlin says a line. And what Tam <laughs> Tamlin asks Tamlin asks Lucian, he says, well, what am I supposed to do now? And Lucian, and so they're whispering and you can hear it like in the left <laughs> side. And Lucian says, go and sit with her, man. <laughs> It's like not in the book at all, but like it's in, in the, the book, book, it's like she can hear them kind of muttering, but she's focusing on the grass versus, mm -hmm. I mean, I actually haven't heard it yet, but Tabby's mentioned it, <laughs> just explaining it multiple times, the uh, <laughs> actually mm -hmm. hearing the dialogue of like, Go sit with her. Go on, go on. Because it's so comedic. Like they took artistic liberty in what they said mm -hmm. because obviously it wasn't written. But I laughed because I was like, okay, that's totally like a guy being like, dude, what do I do now? It's like, go sit with her, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, Lucian's definitely there for moral support. So again, I'm I'm happy he's there, but at the same time, I'm like, God, bro, why would you do this to yourself? <laughs> he's trying to make so, sure that Tamlin behaves right. And so they're kind of I love their banter back and forth with even the three of them because mm -hmm. uh, she's like. 
like she finally you know says uh would you like me to grovel with gratitude for bringing me here hi lord and he's like ah the surreal told you nothing important huh <laughs> It's like, oh, well, I guess so. <laughs> also, the fact that they're kind of bantering with each other, though, like, even Lucian's like, you made a joke, Feyre. Oh, my God. She made a joke? The world is ending. So I, li- I like how she's opening up. Because honestly, we didn't see this laughy Feyre at all at home, at mm-hmm. her at her like, place with her sisters. Didn't we never saw her she once, yeah, once laugh or smile. Who knew um, she could actually laugh and make jokes? Also, dude, Lucian definitely brought booze. <laughs> uh-huh. He's going to need it to get through their antics. Oh, Oh my god. And of course, he's like, he he does the whole, he puts a hand out, I want to show you something. And I want to bring up, I want to bring up before we actually move on with this, is that they're doing the thing where at your, the talking stage or whatever, or you're like seeing each other phase, where he's touching her more. Not mm-hmm. in like a weird way, but like taking her hand, touching her elbow. Mm-hmm. There's more of this physical contact mm-hmm. that wasn't there before, and I want to highlight it because it's important. He's just being friendly. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> We know better. We know better. Yes, we know better. Um, obviously, he's trying to court her, but at the same time, he wants to kiss her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so he leads her to this beautiful, sparkling pool of, well, she thinks it's water. <laughs> um, And so it turns out to be a pool of starlight. Legit starlight. Which I still don't know how that's even possible. I, Dude, he said, even Tamla doesn't have an explanation. It's just, well, if nothing is impossible, I guess. <laughs> it, honestly, so, when I read that, I thought of like the the saying of like impossible is literally spelled I am possible. Ah, that's a so, good like, one. That's a good impossible one. is I'm possible or yeah, I'm impossible, like that. that kind of thing. So I kept thinking of that. I'm like, I mean, that applies here, but like at the same time, how does he not know? <laughs> right, right, right. Like, so we also, I think we talked for like 20 minutes when we first read this about talking, like Liesl was trying to be like, what's the consistency of this water? Or what's the, because it's like, it's not, so we spent a long ass time just talking about what the consistency of the starlight yeah, is. Yeah, I forgot we did that. <laughs> And at some point, I just told her, I don't fucking know. Just, like, suspend your disbelief. They're swimming in it. Whatever. Isn't it bad that, like, I, one of my original thoughts, I don't remember if I mentioned it to you, was that, like, you know, the thickness of, like, mercury. Like, oh, I was just imagining, like, them swimming in mercury. A giant pool of mercury. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, that's what, like, my brain went to image-wise of, like, oh, it's, like, shiny, course, like mercury. Of course it did. But, of course, that probably would have killed them. Um, <laughs> would have killed her, probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, immediately. And then him like a um, couple minutes later. Yeah, but anyway. anyway, so I just wanted to bring that up because I really thought it was funny when we first had our talk. But so we get our first glimpse of a uh, mm, Tamlin mm, shirtless because mm. he says jump. He says jump in. Like let's go for a swim. I'm shirt thinking of to myself. Like, his shirt of just like hey, you want to go for a swim? <laughs> I'm thinking to myself. I'm like if some hot dude was like in front of me, I'd be like okay. Just uh, no, not just a hot dude. Hot dude starting to undress and be like let's. Let's go for a swim. And he's like a high lord who's been kind to me this whole time. And I'm sitting here like just nodding my head like, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. You would like just be sitting there like fidgeting or playing with your hair or something. And then he'd turn mm-hmm. around like, you know, I did say jump in. What are you doing? And... <laughs> Uh, you know, just be like, the, oh, reason, right. the reason she knows that is because she do the exact same fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason she knows that. <laughs> hey, we're similar. I know. <laughs> yeah, similar at times. So, like He's like, don't you want to know what it's like? And she's like, she says, I didn't know what he meant. Swimming in the starlight or swimming with him? <laughs> My thoughts, exactly. It's like, okay. Um. So again, let's uh, go off tangent. Um. So about Lucian. <laughs> Change the subject. <laughs> And he just sits down, still his shirt unbuttoned. Like, okay, I'll try not to look downwards. But so we get a lot of backstory on Lucian here. So Mm -hmm. Lucian has, I mean, poor Lucian. He's been through a lot. We find out that he's actually the youngest of seven brothers of the High Lord of the Autumn Court. So he is quote unquote a heir of sorts. How is that though possible? I, that, I remember that thing being, I remember that being one of my first thoughts of like mm-hmm. aren't like the High Fae children so rare? How is it seven children? Oh, I know. I was like, dude this 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 woman must be freaking fertile as shit. <laughs> she must be powerful I mean, to have that much energy. Or they must be old. True. That 
could be into, honestly. And they've had a lot of time. Yeah. Gross. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they yeah. them having to do it so much that like they'd have to pop out seven. It's like, oh, gross. So yeah. moving on. <laughs> so anyway, we find out that. So again, he's the youngest in a pot. Apparently the autumn core is ruthless, cutthroat, and, they, and his brothers only care about competition. And so Lucian never cared about being the high lord. He, well, we also learned that only the strongest can become the high lord. So versus a more authentic succession line mm-hmm. in more, more historical or modern romance, it's not the oldest. It's right. any of the children who has the strongest power. And so, it's not even chosen by them, really. It's like just whoever the power passes to. Yeah. So even the high lord doesn't, the high lord at the current moment does not choose who it is. Mm-hmm. So it's cutthroat in the sense with his brothers because, you know, all of them are trying to feel each other out and feel who's the strongest. And of course, Lucian, at least at this point, doesn't seem to have too much power. So he was never really in the running and he didn't really want to be anyway. Right. Um, so we find out that he was in love with a lowborn fey, fey female and that he was hoping that the mating bond would snap into place. Again, we're hearing about the mating bond, which again, they they make it seem like it's so rare. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact that he's hoping for it means they somehow had some sort of really strong bond. Mm-hmm. And I hate, I mean, I love how I love how it's described because it definitely gives the air of that. Tamlin says she was put down, not executed, not it mm. put down. Like some kind of like animal. Because that's what his brothers and apparently his father thought of lesser fairies. That he that, wasn't like she was just some kind of pet to him. Yeah. And so his his father had her executed in front of him while his brothers held him and watched and watched. It's like those like entitled parents who are like, well, I'm gonna to ground you but i'm not just gonna dr- ground you like you're in trouble so therefore i'm gonna get rid of your pet oh wow like i've s- seen yeah. entitled parents like that and it's like what the fuck well first of all maybe that's bad because this is literally a person but mm. that's definitely the vibe i'm getting from the high lord of autumn mm-hmm. so obviously i would leave too holy shit like you're the, the love of my the only person that i was really hoping to be with there is dead so of course why would i stay and be in that so he abandoned his title left the autumn core and and he ran to his friend, Tamlin. And so Tamlin was High Lord at that time. And so his, okay, I thought this was really dumb on his brother's part. Lucian left, abandoned his title, but they still were somehow scared enough of him that they went after him to try to kill him. I mean, because in a way, I guess Why? that makes sense because like the uh, title doesn't matter. It's just who's picked in the bloodline, which I, I guess, guess makes sense. But like it, he's made it clear he doesn't want anything to do with them, but mm-hmm. they still feel the need to hunt him down or some shit. And it's like, like you said, why? Why the fuck? <laughs> mm-hmm. And so we also find out that Tamlin and Lucian both killed one of the brothers. So now they're so, down to five. Yeah. So <laughs> wow, because you know this is kind of that I don't want to say a full on ruler land where the ruler of the land makes all the rules, but it kind of is because mm-hmm. if there's trespassers from another court under his protection, of course he has the right to kill them. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I just love how you know he's like and so Lucian was brought us brought on as my emissary because he can talk to people and I cannot (laughs) (laughs) I have social incompetency like oh god isn't that kind of relatable though (laughs) yeah yeah also his father has never apologized and his brothers are too fucking frightened to risk harming him ever again so we're in the stalemate great so they sidetrack so she sidetracks from like the romance and then comes immediately back to it when it gets too sad because it's like oh yeah I guess well I guess I didn't expect all that (laughs) so what if I drink the starlight (laughs) Uh, don't drink the mercury yeah don't drink please (laughs) please don't he says he says it would um what does it says legend claims you'd be happy until your last breath perhaps we both need a glass dude can I get some of that please (laughs) please I think that was a funny jab I think that was funny but it um I love how he says what would be enough to make you happy is he gonna get it for her please that's cute as shit that's so sweet because he's like he's she's like I don't know and she's blushing and then he's like (laughs) would you want the moon or da da and so he like goes off on he's like what can I get for you or whatever Uh she's like hi lord arrogance she is totally oh my god girl (laughs) this is this is us in a nutshell (laughs) 
this scene is us in a nut because the thing is she he's he starts playing with her and then all of a sudden she goes full brat and she's like oh no he thinks he's gonna one-up me with all this sweet talk i'm gonna start to take my clothes off and get in the pool <laughs> oh my god i'm sorry for the audio like this is totally th- this is totally relatable to us because <laughs> we don't i think as we've talked about this in terms of like with other people that we're like we've been interested in it's like oh no we don't like not having the upper hand <laughs> like don't like we totally I would like, do this shit oh yeah i mean i don't know if i'd be enough to take my clothes off but maybe in like a different scenario i don't know <laughs> depends on maybe the now <laughs> not when i was 18 now maybe so <laughs> <laughs> so she says i had enough of that lately enough of that girl encased in ice and bitterness and he <laughs> it says i have it highlighted slowly so slowly his eyes roved down then up whoa what a once over <laughs> there it's not even like a quick one that's like settle or whatever he's just like roving down and roving back up like scanning as if he were studying every inch every curve of me and even though i wore my ivory under things the gaze alone stripped me bare yeah because wow. ivory under things of course those are gonna draw attention <laughs> he's like all right let's do this and just <laughs> i imagine because he's like unbuttoning it right so he's like dude they're like milking this shit yes they are i'm thinking to myself okay they're going swimming now um <laughs> <laughs> What's going to happen? <laughs> I, I was actually thinking they were going to have a kissing booth mo- or No, no, no. Sorry. Not the kissing booth. To all the boys I'd loved before. Jesus Christ. Oh, there it is. Okay. To all the boys I loved before, the hot tub moment. I was thinking that they were going to have a hot tub moment. I mean, was I a little bit disappointed? Yeah, but I like what happens anyway. I like what happens anyway. It's fine. <laughs> but I totally, that's where my mindset was going. And so, obviously, that glorious body walking into the pool. And though I will say what's fun funny though is i was thinking the same thing he's like yeah wait how do you know how to swim Trial and error. How, how do you how do you know like you didn't have any like ponds or anything nearby it seemed and um uh, she just watched the kids do it like she learned from watching them it's like and from almost dr- drowning it's like oh wow <laughs> okay like, oh shit okay so you're definitely determined i think it's another thing for him to say about how proud he or not proud he is but how also, though, he is know- kind of proud of her even though he doesn't like know her super well yet i feel like there is that sense of like wow i'm actually proud for her because apparently no one else has been he's definitely like impressed by her if anything i like the idea that he's impressed because no one's really ever been impressed by what she's done mm-hmm. and so he's then never we- seen anyone like her oh yeah <laughs> i think what's also good is this this whole section that we're talking about right now is them just opening up to each other and then just getting closer and i like this because if anything this is like the telltale sign of a slow burn romance because they're really getting to know each other and even though they're sort of falling for each other in a certain environment i like how how they're you know telling each other things about their past and da 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 and so he asks how her dad lost the fortune mm-hmm. and of course she gets a little bit mad she's like well how did you know well i'm just observant <laughs> yeah he isn't he isn't super dumb he's kind of dumb in some ways but he's not super dumb he's dumb in his experience and for being some like 500 year old i can't believe he can't fucking talk to women but at the same um, time he is 500 <laughs> years old so he has learned how to observe yes but maybe so, he also hasn't had any great role models in in terms of talking to women yeah i would think yeah yeah, yeah. especially if you're being like a high lord son mm-hmm. and you're in that bloodline it's totally like the prince ideal where nobody really like all the girls just are like you know i'm gonna fawn all over you i don't care if you're rude or da 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 no i want someone to have a conversation with me and not mm-hmm. you know just think oh i'm well i'm my father's son so i you know you have to be nice to me mm. uh, so we find out that Feyre's father so we get more information on this anyway that he was called the prince of merchants and and that it was a title he inherited from his father, but apparently they inherited also a shit ton of debt. Which is unfortunate. Uh, which means that their father wasn't necessarily, that it, it wasn't exactly his fault for their downfall. Mm-hmm. But what he was the problem was that he sent the ships into like basically the Bermuda Triangle of Risky Waters. Mm-hmm. It's like apparently in this universe, sending ships through Barat is not a good idea. They're not going to yeah. come out. Yeah. Or if they do, they'll be very damaged and you'll lose profit anyway. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and so, so the ships, so he sent all of that fortune on those three ships and they didn't come. And so it was a risky move and it, it didn't pay off. And so then we find out that she didn't start hunting until after a little while when she was for, because the money finally ran out then. Mm-hmm. And he's just so surprised 
surprised and impressed and amazed by her through what she's learned and just and I think this is why like I thought more about the the child thing when we talked about it the last time Mm -hmm. I think this is where that I think that's where the part of the argument gets me in that term of uh, not argument but our talk about that because she's definitely more experienced than any other mortal that it seems like he's again he hasn't been around much but (laughs) is it's almost like when those people that those people that are still young but have been through a lot Mm -hmm. know that they're experienced just based on their hardship and obviously it's not a good thing but at the same time I think that gives perspective and it's like wow this person is amazing for being that young and going through this and coming out on it relatively well Mm -hmm. and so I just think it's a nice sentimental he's like yeah wow (laughs) and so basically the end of this chapter is they have that little moment in the glen and in the starlight pool and they're riding back with Lucian and she's like staring at him like oh no I have all this information but this is you this is 100% you where like you find out more about somebody and you can't stop staring at them and then he's like okay what it's like, oh I just know a lot of information about you now <laughs> I know all about you and your deepest, darkest secrets. Like that I can't <laughs> hear. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, why, why is that me though? <laughs> I know, yeah. And so, uh, she actually thanks Lucian for the advice on the surreal. And he's shocked. He's like, wait, you're not mad at me about die. that? <laughs> yeah, like, I basically set you out in that woods to get killed. He's like, you can't possibly forgive me that easily for sending you into danger. And I think this is definitely, I think this ends their, their tirade of each other in terms of about Andreas Mm -hmm. I think now they're finally just he's just kind of forgiven her in that way because um, he said Tam Tam told me you that your first shot was to save the Surreals not not your own he's like I know far too many in their own culture high fair lesser fairies who wouldn't have saved the Surreal Mm -hmm. so it's almost like he's realizing that even people in his own race wouldn't have saved this monstrous creature or whatever so in this moment of solidarity he gifts his his knife to her mm-hmm. which i think is so sweet that is so cute it was like finally it just, a friendship here i know it's immense in that brotherly bond that i think they mm-hmm. have definitely <laughs> definitely so, yeah. actual friendship right so yeah that and then so then afterwards um we move on to chapter 19 so the paints have finally arrived yay <laughs> and she gets to see the gallery um oh and what does it say oh all this he had done this all for me as if i would have cared about the cobwebs or the dust <laughs> me <laughs> it's like you didn't need to spruce it up i could have gone here two days ago <laughs> I like, would have been fine with it. Just tell me where it was. Like, I would have been fine with it. I like how, and I think this is, you know, a lot of the things when I've read, like, vampire stuff or werewolf stuff. Anytime there's people who are, you know, eons or centuries old, they like and appreciate how humans... So, the Fae will take that stuff for granted. The galleries mm-hmm. and stuff. Because they're so old, they, you know, kind of forget about those things and don't appreciate them as much. Mm-hmm. Well, as does. And so, if anything, that intrigues him. Yeah. That she, he's seeing someone appreciate the art. And it probably hasn't been appreciated for quite a while. Oh, yeah. I mean, since there was cobwebs, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. pretty sure no one went into this place. It needed two whole days to get cleaned. Mm-hmm. And obviously, these fey artists are, like, extraordinary, way better than the human art would have been in terms right. of just because they've had eons to practice. <laughs> um, and so I think it's sweet because he, like, she starts crying. Mm. And he's like, I've never knew that humans were capable of uh, of tears uh, well <laughs> yeah or caring so much about like art yeah and i think i was definitely thinking to myself when he looked at her like that i was like okay you like her yeah yeah it's over you I'm like her at the point. point no point arguing <laughs> it's like okay but he i i also do appreciate like how he did before he leaves her alone he leaves her alone to kind of peruse and paint by herself and i think it's a good man move to do yeah isn't like forcing himself to like uh, be with her and try and explain every picture like, right because letting like, her be herself mm-hmm. and enjoy it at her own pace mm-hmm. so we get our first time jump mm-hmm. so again weeks have passed now where it's i think sometimes i have to clock it with sarah because sometimes there were days passing and whatnot so now we have like several weeks going by and now it's different from the first time jump we had because the first time jump it was her and lucian going on rides together now it's her and tamlin going on rides together <laughs> <laughs> Damn. It switched. And so uh 
she's like painting around the gardens and da 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 and Tamlin has to go sometimes off to deal with threats or whatever. High Lord stuff. Uh, High Lord stuff. I, I like how it says at the bottom here. I slow oh yeah. So she's still having the nightmares though, as we're seeing this. Um she still has the nightmares of the pale faced woman and there's this uh shadowy presence that she can never quite catch a glimpse of. But she slowly stopped being so afraid. Stay with the High Lord, you will be you will be safe. So I did. I like that. I like how mm-hmm. she's had to take the surreal to tell her but um <laughs> she's finally she's starting fine. to realize sorry we were almost gonna say the same thing no go ahead. no go ahead what i was gonna say was that like she's finally like starting to actually discover herself as a person when literally her whole life has been either in the shadow of her sister and mother or mm-hmm. keep her family alive like now she's discovering what it's actually like to live even if that took her being kidnapped to prithian yeah and it's um uh, i mean the only thing i was gonna say about that is uh, i think she finally figured out that Tamlin isn't out to get her. Mm -hmm. He's pretty genuine in his protection and you know, you're fine to be here and do what you want. Like, you don't have to go on rides with me but I'm here if you want. Like, Mm -hmm. I think she thought maybe, and I kind of seemed at first, he was pressuring her to do stuff but now he's more of an option in terms of, you know, like when I have stuff and when I'm available. It's like, it's more I think her sense of control was the Mm -hmm. problem there. She has to fill up her day now. Yeah, and she was out of control before but now that she's in control, it's good Mm -hmm. and i think i wanted to bring up that i love how there's a comfortable silence because when they're sitting together it's how do i say this um it's hard maybe i've told you this but i know i've definitely told you this before (laughs) i think you know when you really like somebody when you like especially in a romantic way where you can kind of be in each other's presence but not necessarily talking to each other yeah i mean even in friendship too i mean it doesn't necessarily have to be romantic but i mean um, we have that moment all the time where we can just sit in silence sometimes I think we've actually like gone for a very long time without like really talking Mm. Um, but like we're just sitting in silence and it doesn't feel uncomfortable at all it just feels well comfy Mm -hmm. and doing work and stuff and Mm -hmm. doing our own thing but like also having like that presence of each other Mm -hmm. so it's like that's even possible like in friendships Mm -hmm. but I definitely when in a romantic context I definitely know that I'm going on the right track with somebody because of Mm -hmm. that like okay no I I think this is going well (laughs) that's like another thing off the check like checklist just like checklist, yeah, yeah. check i can sit in silence for long periods of time with them without feeling awkward but of course she gets into the sad moment though where she's i mean obviously once you've gone like weeks and weeks i understand why she gets a little depressed here because she's like you know the mortal world has moved on without as if i'd never existed a whisper of a miserable life gone unremembered by anyone whom i'd known or cared for <sighs> so depressing thought it's like yeah I mean, I can see how, because she always wanted her family to care about her the way that it seems like Lucian and Tamlin are caring for her Mm -hmm. in some way. Like, she always wanted that with them, and the fact that she can't have it with them is very upsetting. And I get that. I I really get that. Um, So, obviously, she gets a little mad at him, but it doesn't last. (laughs) It's it's mostly just a, I don't really know what to... I, I think this different interaction is different than before, because she's not necessarily getting angry at him it's more of an exasperated i don't know what to think i don't know what to do now (laughs) Mm -hmm. so as she's walking around she goes into the rose garden and so of course he comes up behind her my father had this garden planted for my mother as a mating present so we hear the the mating so we find out that tamlin's parents were mates Mm -hmm. and the rose garden was for them um while still feeling the hopelessness and sadness um i think honestly she's fine i think she finally found the root of her anger Mm -hmm. she's finally fucking mad at her family instead of being mad at others for talking about the family right she's really angry at them she's not mad at anyone else and thank god she finally figured it out though i mean and that's something hard to think when you've been surrounded by them your whole life Mm -hmm. Uh, and like i think we're also taught like not to think bad about our families Mm. no i can be fucking mad at them if i want to in terms of them not feeling like they care or Mm -hmm. you know Again, that, you know, if I was gone, would they remember me kind of feeling? And so she says she like she feels bad for being happy. She's like these two weeks, I haven't really, you know, thought about them. And I've kind of forgotten about them as well. You know, I I, I, I don't. Why? Why should I feel tremendous shame for feeling happy? She shouldn't. But I also understand where she's coming from. Mm-hmm. We would feel the same way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she says, though, this is kind of like the line that I highlighted. She said, compared to you, your borders, your magic being weak. And I suppose myself 
pity is absurd. He said, if it grieves you, then I don't think that's absurd at all. Oh. God, what a what a positive dude. Like, it's, oh, I think like something in modern life that I just, well, I've tried to hammer this home to you as well. Just because it doesn't bother maybe somebody else doesn't mean your feelings about it aren't valid. Like, they are. Like, it might feel stupid in the moment, you know, but it, if it's something that hurts you and it's something that makes you sad, then that's what it is. Mm-hmm. And that's don't try to it back to you as a hypocritical friend. Ah, it's like, don't try to have somebody tell you that it's stupid or that it, you shouldn't be sad about something you're sad about. That's, I think, the dumbest logic I think I've ever heard. <laughs> So just want to tell that and enlighten that to the audience. <laughs> if something is hurting you, making you angry, mad, sad, happy, whatever, you are val- 100% valid in your feelings. You are valid. Yes, you're valid in the moment and every moment. So life advice. Just- <laughs> life advice. <laughs> life so- advice. Tabby and Liesl. Right. <laughs> Next podcast coming soon. Right. <laughs> so also I love in this instance that, okay, she's trying to be kind of badass and she like takes, she like snips one of the roses off with her hand. And so her hand's bleeding. <laughs> he's just like dang it i have pain in my hand but i'm trying to be badass i don't care and so the thing is he <laughs> sorry so he kisses her palm <sighs> and it's the blood but it's healing her <laughs> <sighs> it's so sweet Stop. though like i can totally yeah. imagine like this was one of the well i had already been like picturing scenes in my head when i was reading but this was one that definitely stuck of like i can totally imagine him like holding her hand and like just turning his head into her <laughs> palm and kissing it and then like her <laughs> feeling the pain like like fade away yeah it's so and sweet he, he gives her a cheek kiss mm. and she doesn't balk from it good that's improvement he said don't feel bad for one moment about doing what brings you joy because mm. then okay dude this was kind of hot i'm not gonna lie don't don't <laughs> when they're like close to each other in this moment she's like it's such a cinematic why do any of this and he so he's like close to her leaning down on her because obviously there's a height difference and you know how much i love height difference <laughs> uh, that you're gonna expose you that's her thing right there tabby's thing right there is height differences oh, granted for the audience i'm five three so <laughs> most people are taller than me so it's not a huge goal yeah except for you like the guys who are like at least a foot taller yeah <laughs> i can't i shouldn't reach the shoulder <laughs> Um, you sure he said, So he's like, so he's like so close to her, and he's like, I can just imagine, and especially in the graphic audio, his voice like turned really growly here. It was he's like, because your human joy fascinates me. <laughs> it's like I'm drawn to it, even when I know I shouldn't be, even when I try not to be. Wow, <laughs> that's a confession if I ever heard one. Oh well, yeah, hundred percent. Like I think this is like the first. You know, he's kind of opening up about his feelings to her, but she doesn't really know how to take it. Mm-hmm. And so, but the thing is, you know what she automatically thinks she's like she talks about the lifespan thing she's like oh but why be with me though if i'm just gonna die mm-hmm. and so but then she's like oh why am i thinking about that <laughs> Why is that important to me? Because it's hard not to. And it, like, I feel like it shows that she like is realizing that she might have feelings for him if she's even considering mm-hmm. that she'll probably die before him because she's human and he li- lives forever. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, not really. So he left me and I took a gasping breath, not realizing I'd been holding it in me. Uh, <laughs> not realizing that I craved his warmth, his nearness until he was gone. So cute. It's so cute. That's I can't honestly get over it. a real feeling, though. Like if you've been standing really close with someone and suddenly they're not there like i know it's written in a lot of books of like i suddenly miss his warmth but no it's a very real feeling <laughs> and like you mm-hmm. just suddenly feel very empty for a moment mm-hmm. definitely definitely felt that before <laughs> single pringles we feel like that all the fucking time now <laughs> <sighs> we'll find someone eventually yeah, yeah you'll yeah, find we'll a, the six seven guy or whatever <laughs> Some dude in the NBA. <laughs> I mean, hey, then you can play basketball together. Well, that's true. He'd fucking win every time, though. <laughs> Just on principle. <laughs> no, not necessarily. He might go easy on you because you're too cute. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know how and to get your way around things. You'll find some dude or girl that's, like, really, really into music. Just be careful with those music people, though. <laughs> true. Unfortunately. <laughs> Talking from experience. <laughs> you can be a little bit a lot. <laughs> a little bit a lot. We'll see. Anyway. Once we get there. <laughs> We digress. 
Jinx. <laughs> so, uh, so as like, so it's like a different day, I guess. So no, 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 it actually is the same day. Sorry. So she's kind of lingering from the little moment that they had, and so she goes out in the woods because she wants to see if he'll follow her or not. Mm-hmm. And so she lays down a trap for him. She can feel him following, and she's like, nah, because she knows the signs now. Mm-hmm. She knows. So I'm so proud of her. <laughs> she, she snares him. She snares the High Lord of the Spring Court, and he's like dangling from the snare. <laughs> And he, like, has, like, this little, like, growl of when he's, like, caught. It's like, well, he just walked into it. That's his own fault. I thought they were going to have a Spider-Man moment where she'd kiss him upside down. <laughs> but they, but, okay, bro, just gonna say, this is, like, again, we're getting into the explicit territory of where she's, like, running his, her, her fingers through his hair. And he's, like, <laughs> purring at her. I, yeah, I definitely <laughs> will say that made me blush a little bit. <laughs> I was like, okay, Tamlin, all right. Like, just it's like that. I, mean, I guess it's really him. true. He really does like having his fur brush. Yeah. I mean, if it's her doing it. <laughs> true. And of course, he literally doesn't even, he just like takes out his claw and just fucking snips the snare down. He doesn't even need, you know. Yeah. And she's like, was- honestly, she's about to warn him and he just flips super easily. It's like, oh yeah, he's a high lord. <laughs> that's what would have happened if he got caught in the snare that she put in front of her bedroom. Like, exactly. That's what would have happened, but now she finally got him. That's true. Um, she did finally get to snare him. And so I think this is super adorable. Also, well, okay, before this, dude, she's, fair is horny as shit. They just, at this point, I was thinking, they just need to bang already. They just need yeah. to have at it and, like, you know, talk about the emotion later. <laughs> Yeah, there is they a already lot of sexual have, tension right now. Or just, especially on her part, because, you know, because we are seeing it in first POV. Mm-hmm. So I don't really know how he's thinking, but it kind of feels like that. Yeah, definitely. So he, it's so cute. He writes her limericks. He writes her limericks with the words that she, that she threw away. They're like at the end of the sentences. Like, dang, he's a poet too? Dude, hot as shit. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> because he, he leans down to her and he's like, before you start yelling, and he like comes down if i'd have dared i could have leaned back into his chest his war his breath warmed my neck the shell of his ear and he read the poem i mean yeah because she can't read yet so he hands her these limericks and she's like what the fuck but the fact that he's so close to her it's like okay that's hot as shit at the same time i'm not paying attention to what you're saying like (laughs) stop it fair just focus on him i mean not on him on what he's saying so he's writing like dirty limericks but because apparently in his father's war band he doesn't like to lose so they used to do they used to uh do these competitions where whoever could write the dirty dirtiest limerick <laughs> and obviously apparently he's really good at it <laughs> and i just want to say when he finished i tipped back my head and howled my laughter like sunshine sh- shattering age hardened ice i love that i do too but i'm still just sad that we didn't actually get to hear what the limericks were <laughs> yeah yeah you did say that the first time <laughs> i was so disappointed i was looking forward to the limericks if we ever have to talk to sarah write down this this writing it down right now yeah yeah write write down uh this question sarah, what are what were the limericks especially the fifth one the naughtiest of all we want really to know <laughs> Um, but anyway, I just like how Sarah describes every time she describes her laughing. I love how it's like at every point it's like breaking a new wall, mm-hmm. and she's definitely trying to you know give that you know metaphor, new meaning to every time she's opening herself up because she has a bunch of walls that mm-hmm. she's trying down, and Tamlin's breaking them, breaking them down, and so we finally get. Obviously, this is happening in a day, but we finally get. Okay, wait. So wait, you said your parents not their wedding but their mating i want to know more about this yeah what is like mating so so tamlin explains that the high fame mostly marry but if they do uh if they're blessed they'll find their mate their equal their match in every way so cool um high wed throughout without the mating bond but if you find your mate the bond is so deep that marriage is basically insignificant in comparison solid i mean obviously i'm someone and i've told this to lisa before i believe in i mean i believe in mates in some way but I, I believe in soulmates. Mm-hmm. So this was definitely a cute, oh, yeah, that, like, this is so cute. But apparently it's very rare to them because it's a very, mm-hmm. not only a soulmate thing, it's a magical bond. Right. Not just a, not just a kind of a word. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this kind of gets led in the conversation. Again, I'm going to just keep saying this. This These chapters are definitely Tamlin and Feyre opening up, opening up to each other. <laughs> so we learn more about Tamlin's family. So apparently Tamlin had two brothers. And, you know, obviously he had a mom and dad, but his father and brothers were terrible. 
and they owned slaves and they fought for the slavers on during the war side. And so he basically said that um, he was triggered by her in terms, I think that's why he was so awkward with her at the beginning because of how his family treated humans. Mm -hmm. And obviously he knew he wasn't going to be like that, but if anything, he felt like kind of like a guilt in terms of, Mm -hmm. you know, obviously he didn't do anything as a child, but he still feels guilty for what his family did. Yeah, like I don't want to be even close to being like them. Yeah. So Feyre kind of gets it now why he was maybe a little bit more uh, kind of weird with her at the start. Mm -hmm. And so we find out that the this mating bond isn't exactly I don't want to say it's not it's all cracked up to be but apparently her her mom did love her his father a lot mm-hmm. but she kind of overlooked a lot of the stuff that yeah, he was doing which is not because, great no but also nothing is going to be perfect right in terms of that just because people are made baited to be together doesn't necessarily mean that they're what's I don't want to say they're not what's best for each other but that it's not gonna go well mm-hmm. <laughs> so we find out that his 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 whole family was killed by the enemy the high lord of an enemy court so, high lord wars. so obviously that's not good because it means like the high lords are sort of there's kind of a blood feud already with <laughs> like high lords and you know each other that's not mm-hmm. good and so because he didn't want to be a threat to his brothers he joined the war band and something i keep wanting to bring up that he he says he's a good soldier not a leader and so that's why he was you know against maybe being the high lord yeah um but his power kept growing and obviously he was poised to be the next high lord and obviously because his brothers got killed Mm kind of makes it seem like he'd be the one there was no other choice yeah Mm -hmm. he had the signs Um, and then on top of that his brothers were killed yeah so i mean it's not yeah high lord of an enemy court that's rough And, like, if you think of that, that's two High Lords, like, two of the seven most powerful beings in Prithian fighting it out. (laughs) No thanks. I I don't really want to watch that. (laughs) I mean, obviously, who wouldn't have thought there was going to be a blood feud at some point? Probably. (laughs) Honestly, yeah. Uh, That's what it's like when between leaders and shit. So, I was kind of expecting it, but, wow. So, yeah, I think what's, I think another point of compromise and kind of, you know, contingency with them is that when Tamlin became the High Lord, no one wanted a war your beast mm. to run and it goes back to what nesta said that she was a half wild beast dang nesta your words really still keep ringing oh hell yeah <laughs> Uh, very much so. And I think that's like a point of compromise with them because then she says, then they're idiots. You kept these lands protected from the blight when it seems the others haven't fared so well. They're idiots. Just like he said, like the like the chapter before where he said they're fools for not realizing it. Mm-hmm. They're like so, so alike each other. <laughs> but again, different. Yep. So then, do-do-do, we get the... <laughs> They're setting up the... Duh, I'm sorry, the audience. You're going to give me so hype <laughs> over this. So they're setting up the bonfires for what? Kalanmai. It's in two days. <laughs> Drumroll. Kalanmai. They call, it, call it Fire Night. And Kalen, this, is Tamlin's, this is Tamlin's words, not ours. I mean, we have it for the, the title, but it's very fairy. And that's all he has to say about it. Da, da, da. It's very fairy. Oh, okay, what does that mean? <laughs> it means like, well, it means that you can't go. Yeah, she's like, wait, I'm invited, right? It's like, uh... No, 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 you're not. He's like, stay away from everybody. So he says to stay away from all the people because apparently fairies from across the courts are going to be here and they're free to wander. That doesn't spode well, honestly. No. <laughs> Considering like he was previously saying, you know, that borders are pretty much non-existent anyway and that a lot of mm-hmm. bad Ill- are wandering around. Well, now they're allowed to be there. Mm-hmm. Great. So I will tell you, and I told you this the first time and I'll tell this to the audience, since I read a lot of Fae lore before I read these books and Cal and Mai was actually a thing that's written in Fae lore but it's definitely not what happens <laughs> in in this context it has some roots but it's uh they called it the wild hunt that's right that's right and I mean basically that is sort of what happens but not in the same context it's mostly not about women it's about like actual animals uh-huh. <laughs> so Sarah's just taking it and spinning it on the head's head which I enjoy thanks Sarah but anyway we'll get there but yes so she's not invited and that's the end of that and so as they're walking we get a very sudden tense silence from tamlin and he tells her to hide in the bushes and don't come out Uh oh seems like an enemy's approaching (laughs) yeah so she hears the encounter but she can't see who they're talking to which is so weird to me (laughs) that she sees tamlin and lucian but she can't see the person that they're talking the person whatever that they're talking to i definitely thought 
thought like similar to a favorite of like are they playing a joke because they're like just staring at nothing just talking and being angry at yeah. nothing what the fuck which then makes me think i'm like is she glamored to not see something because i didn't even consider that at the time i was just like why like what is happening this has got to be thought, a joke because i thought she was definitely like belled and to think like to not seeing something because that's mm. too weird yeah so we kind of get this really bad encounter a very gruff voice is talking um definitely once it started talking i figured she might be like at first i thought because she was hiding by hand ahead she couldn't see anything but then when it said that she looked at them and couldn't see anything then i'm like there's got to be something there that she can't see Mm -hmm. and so um your continued behavior is garnering a lot of interest at court she has begun wondering why you haven't given up yet oh again the she person why won't anyone say any names it definitely gives me the voldemort vibe of like Mm -hmm. it's like oh she who should not be named (laughs) or like you know who because honestly what if they did say her name and she just popped up at a note what if it was like a summoning Mm. that's what i was i was like they do say her name what if it's like a you know i'm gonna say bloody mary in the mirror three times and she just (laughs) fucking shows up (laughs) but speak you so ill of she who holds your fate in her hands so apparently this woman is like fucking powerful as shit in terms of being able to wipe out the entire estate Mm -hmm. (laughs) so she's unhappy with a lot of the things tamlin seems to be doing even though he doesn't really seem to be doing anything (laughs) yeah it's like wait why is she unhappy with tamlin he's just chilling and we also get from tamlin tell her i'm getting sick of cleaning up the trash she dumps on the border my first thought was like trash as in the summer fairy that you buried was the summer fairy trash to you yeah i don't think that was a good way to say that but i think it was a his way of trying to get back at whatever's talking to him Mm -hmm. Mm. the invisible thing laughed again such a horrible vicious sound though you have a heart of stone tamlin you certainly keep a host of fear inside it don't worry high lord all will be right as rain soon enough wow that's a threat if i'd ever heard one (laughs) (laughs) that's not good so obviously i'm thinking to myself i'm like okay this has to be some like monkey lackey of the queen or you Mm -hmm. know because i'm thinking at this point you know wicked witch of the west seems like a queen in her own right like who is this bitch (laughs) Um, and like the something that stuck out to me i remember was the fact that this thing this voice said um like there have been like rumors going around at court it's like what do you mean Mm. at court like isn't this a court right it has to be one of the other courts right that's what i'm thinking or like but like there's no such thing as like a high lady right and so like is going back to the idea of like is this she a concert or something Mm -hmm. you know what the biggest thing i picked up though from the conversation was Mm -hmm. they talked about traveling cave lucian said to not come through the through the cave again and i'm thinking to myself like the fuck is that i think there's so much information getting thrown at her that she doesn't know what to pick up on i mean yeah totally she's like traveling cave she who holds the hate like wait i I, I didn't even think of like when it said come through the cave like i wasn't even considering that as like a traveling cave of like in between two places i mean Mm -hmm. i've experienced that before in other novels and fantasy books but i guess i just hadn't considered it i'm like cave what is there like (laughs) wait what Um, i'm so confused and then like even yeah i just didn't know what to think yeah it's a lot it's a lot but um she was overwhelmed i was overwhelmed but it's also definitely intriguing and interesting to keep you going like who the frick is this creature thing voice lucian did not know that she was there he was like uh what the fuck is she doing here (laughs) and he so we find out that it's called the adder and what a kind of good name for it Um, gives me chills even just thinking so yeah that's a really bad encounter to have how was it in the graphic audio like what kind of voice was it you know what the adder's voice was kind of weird in the graphic audio i'm not gonna lie (laughs) it definitely didn't sound monstrous it sounded like okay let me let me see if i get um he says she she sets them loose as gifts and reminds of what will happen (laughs) It's definitely like a posh, like, dude. And I'm thinking like to myself, a pompous like, dude. that is not what I was expecting. <laughs> no, I'm totally thinking of, like, growling of, like... I mean, it growled a little bit, but it definitely... It was it was kind of off in terms of the vibe that I was getting. Yeah. So, wasn't too impressed with that, but again, <laughs> I still... So, I'm not gonna shit on it too much, but... <laughs> so, then we get into the, uh, the next chapter, chapter 20. So, obviously, it's tense now as the following day is going on. Um, and so, she actually paints an image of what she believes the adder looks like mm-hmm. um, and honestly from how she described it I mean I again we don't know what he looks like but kind of seems spot on to me I'm not, <laughs> and like she was saying like I'm think- didn't she say like the uh, the air like just smelled like really bad oh it smelled like carrion it smelled like death 
Yeah. So as long as like the creature she paints looks like death, it seems like it should fit. All right. 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 And so of course, you know, nothing much is going on during the day because the Callan Mai and the night, and everyone's getting prepared. Alice is, mm-hmm. you know, getting prepared for food preparations, and um, the kitchen is like empty as hell. And this, this is where the graphic audio really impressed me because the book describes as there's drum beats going on, almost like kind of like a summoning, and throughout the whole bit of this it's continuous like the drum beats in the back are so subtle enough that they still continue and then of course they grow as stuff goes on as she gets closer and it's just beautiful i love it perfect a plus on the the (laughs) direct for that and so it's almost like she feels like there's this summoning this thread to pull her to go which is a little bit weird because if it's a fey thing and sorry hiccuping (laughs) if if it's like a fey thing and she's why is she being summoned why is there this hole for her she's a human if it's a fey thing that's a little bit weird maybe my thought around that was you know maybe it's a fey thing in terms of like the ceremonies and like the festivals part of it is very fey but maybe like it has something to do with um the magic around her i guess yeah and so even though she's not fey she is in prithian so like she's in she's surrounded by magic so maybe you know kind of like if you what's it called a good analogy i don't know if this is a good analogy but like if you're like scooping water with a cup and you just happen to be a fish swimming like you're gonna get scooped up anyway because the water around you is being scooped up ah uh, okay so that's kind of I what i'm it. thinking with the magic of like the magic is being pulled and she is being pulled with it because she's there mm-hmm. surrounded by it okay i see that so i just love how she's kind of like you know beauty and the or not beauty and the beast but sleeping beauty coming down the stairs as she's being pulled and all of a sudden she just sees tamlin burst through without a shirt on <laughs> with like a baldric slash of like uh, around his his chest and she's just like and he has paint all over himself she's like the fuck are you doing <laughs> this is sleeping beauty and the beast it's like he said it's cat and so this is a different tamlin than we've seen in these last couple of chapters he's very like jerky he's flatly talking to her mm-hmm. kind of a little bit angry he's like go to your chamber look lock your door set up a snare whatever you do she's like just do it don't come out until morning as we know the snares don't work on him so I just want to say he warned her. He did. <laughs> he warned her ahead of time to not do it. Anything that comes after this is a hundred percent her fault. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. She was. I have no sympathy. She was definitely. I mean, they probably should have told her what was going on. But uh, also, yeah, because like she, she's already proven like that she's very curious and will eavesdrop or like wander around to learn new things. Um, so you not telling is literally going to make her want to know more. I know. I know. But again, she was told. <laughs> she was at least so, warned. She wasn't told about the event, but she was warned. So so she does so she does stay in the room for a while, but then at some point she's like she almost hears this voice in the back of her head, like, go, go to it. And so, hmm. of course, as our curious protagonist, she does not stay in the room for long. She goes and takes a horse and rides it bareback <laughs> to the to the parte, as we like to call it. Parte. And it seems like all the Fae seem to have a pull as well. And so obviously Obviously, there's, you know, they without masks here. There's a lot of different people. Um, there's even, you know, ones with spring court masks. Mm-hmm. But I think the weirdest thing was that no one fucking, like, acknowledged her presence. Because if I'm thinking as the Fae were, I mean, obviously the Fae would know she's human because they'd smell mm-hmm. it. No one's really paying attention to her as she's, like, walking through and walking around. Right. Because then she sees, she sees, like, a bunch of fires and she sees hills and then she sees this big-ass cave on the hillside <laughs> she doesn't go in it but she sees like a cave mouth and like people lined up and paths and shit and mm-hmm. so obviously getting a little bit weird <laughs> it's like what it, whatever this great right is it's like okay this is definitely a bit strange she's, definitely a bit fairy she's trying to look for alice because she's trying to see where she is but obviously i'm thinking of this as like a huge you know i'm thinking of this in the terms of you know a big ass concert how the mm-hmm. hell is she gonna find there right <laughs> it's gonna be pretty hard so Not impossible, but very hard we get the three fucking assholes god <laughs> um the gross uh, sorry for quote-unquote rapey dudes the <laughs> um the per that's a better way of saying it but i mean honestly what were they going to do to her probably rape or assault her i'm not gonna i mean i'm not gonna sugarcoat it that's probably what they were gonna do i mean yeah considering like as she soon learns that's what the mm. night is for assuming that all females yeah. there are willing yeah right although so, i yeah, feel like they still would have done it even without willingness 
is. So they're definitely fairies. They're not like the high fae like Lucian or Tamlin. But of course, they're roving down at her. A human woman. It's like, ugh, gross. Mm-hmm. Dude, dude oh, <laughs> the graphic audio for these guys were so fucking gross. Because remember, we listened to this, remember? Yeah, I made you yeah. listen. Because he's like, just some fire and I had fun. Ooh. It was like, ew. <laughs> and I remember cringing so hard at it when you played it for me. And I'm just like, but it was oh, good. It, it was, that's, I mean, that's kind of probably what it would have yeah, been. <laughs> it fit the character really well, but at the same time, made me want to punch him even more. Right. And I'm not no, a violent I can't person. Be- I can't believe they're still not a little bit weird that there's a human person here. No. They're just kind of like, oh, like bold statement from you tonight. It's like, like ooh, a wait, human. I'm just going to go with it. Cool. Of course, she's like, you know, trying to fight back against them and they're they're taking her so they're taking her like leading her into the darkness which is so fucking scary into the forest away from like all the fires and other fae she's right. about to take out her knife and so they push her they're gonna push her to the ground but then a sturdy hands grasp under her shoulders before i could draw them or hit the grass they were strong hands warm and broad there you are i've been looking for you said a deep sensual male voice i'd never heard but i kept my eyes on the three fairies bracing myself the three lesser fairies paled their dark eyes wide thank you for finding her for me enjoy the right with enough bite beneath his words that the fairies stiffen and they just fucking scatter (laughs) and the chapter ends with i stepped out of the shelter of my savior's arms and turned to thank him standing before me was the most beautiful man i've ever seen wow sarah what a fucking way to end what she really knows how to end chapters that's for sure oh 100 percent. like i'm thinking to myself okay also isn't that a little bit weird that you're saying this dude is hot when you're like into tamlin <laughs> i mean but i think it's sometimes little... you just gotta admire like someone's beauty true or true it might have been the sense of like you know kind of what is that moment of this guy just saved your life basically he just mm-hmm. saved you so he also looks even more beautiful because it's like you know halo around their head of like oh they must be an angel for saving me right and it's almost like this this moment definitely had me we i think we said this before but you know when i mean obviously you haven't been to a bar because lisa just turned 21 so (laughs) you haven't ventured too much into the bar sphere but for me there's definitely moments though where like a guy or a girl we're just kind of say or do something to kind of save somebody from a different scenario from like a creepy dude Mm -hmm. this is totally what that was making me think of where there was kind of a bystander i mean obviously Mm -hmm. apparently he's attractive but a bystander kind of noticing that this woman is basically getting herded off Mm -hmm. against her will a good samaritan stepping in so it's like i definitely thought of it like that in terms of i mean again before we get to the next chapter but definitely wow (laughs) this he's kind of like saying that it's almost like he's trying to pretend that he knows her Mm -hmm. because he's like oh yeah get away from her but what do you think about the fact that they were scared of this person i was like "Uh uh-oh i was thinking kind of like her i mean like as we're about to get into Mm -hmm. definitely has like an aura around him so maybe that's what scared him Um, Mm -hmm. and like i don't know maybe they had a bad run in with him before was definitely one of the thoughts i was originally thinking yeah yeah so obviously this guy is so as we get into the next chapter chapter 21 she says and i have this highlighted everything about this stranger radiated sensual grace and ease but obviously at the same time she's kind of a little bit wary because <laughs> mm-hmm. new person i mean obviously i mean you should be wary of any you know stranger danger that's what you know <laughs> yeah and like also the many warnings of keeping her wits around her and mm-hmm. one thing that i thought in a recent reread of this section was the whole Mm -hmm. idea of like hey don't go out at night especially in prithian (laughs) and especially with a bunch of fucking fairies i don't know (laughs) even more so now when she's been told there's more fairies than usual and that they're not just from this court so they're not under the rule of protection for Mm -hmm. her like that tam gives and so (laughs) she's already like broken that rule other than sneaking out against their warning and then also sneaking out at night (laughs) it's like okay great but like I also I, I am glad that she has a wariness about him instead of just being like oh my god like pretty face my hero I will do anything for this man yeah that would have been weird if that was the case but I do like so we never get this guy's name mm-hmm. he's just the stranger and so uh, we we get his description he has short black hair raven's feathers his he has pale skin and he has blue eyes so deep they were violet though dude you know okay I, I mean I'm super wary of this guy in terms of just again because he scared off so many those like guys he must be powerful but i will tell you liesel knows this 
else. Yeah. I can't I can't help but think that I mean I'm totally on her side of the any guy with dark hair, brunette, black, blue, almost violet eyes, that's hot. That's or, automatically well, hot. In general, like dark, dark hair and lighter eyes mm-hmm. immediately just like, okay, that has my attention. <laughs> oh, let's see. I mean, I obviously thought this guy was going to come back into play sometime. Like, okay. But that's the thing we I, learned with Sarah is like, if she brings someone up, they're going to come back. More than, also, that's like a normal book thing. Why would, why would you have this guy show up and then never again? Mm-hmm. You know? So anyway, so she doesn't really know what to say to him. Uh, he says, what's a mortal woman doing here on fire night? His voice is a lover's purr that sent shivers through me caressing every muscle bone and nerve but she's like weird about it because she's like uh what made you so scary to them that mm-hmm. it's almost like a weird caress in the terms of like ooh, I'm, I'm like i'm waiting for the caveat to come yeah <laughs> and like she's definitely feeling that aura and just being like no something's off here something's not normal though i will say in the graphic audio i loved this dude's voice <laughs> it was amazing i loved it 10 out of 10 the description definitely gave me what the what the voice quality was sensual right like, like just visual yeah 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 like very very sensual very it's kind of hard to say oh how does a sensual voice sound they did it they nailed it <laughs> is the uh did the voice actor stay the same throughout the books just curious yeah mm-hmm. yeah sorry that just randomly um, popped into my mind <laughs> yeah. and so of course she's like lying her ass off and he's circling her like a predator to prey <laughs> i think that's what's getting her scared it's like oh he could have just been a savior and like talk to her face to face no he's circling her <laughs> and he's he definitely doesn't believe a lick of what she's saying like about having friends here or he's like you're welcome for saving you by the way <laughs> <laughs> well, very arrogant <laughs> <laughs> Though there's something about him, I could have sworn tendrils of Starkist night trailed in his wake. Aren't humans usually terrified of us, and aren't you, for that matter, supposed to keep to your side of the wall? Again, thank you. This guy is responding how I actually thought they were supposed to respond. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, what are you doing here? It's a perfect thank you, actually. <laughs> Whereas everyone else is like, oh, it's fine. I might be a little wary of you, but I mean, thank you for thinking what I was thinking. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so <laughs> uh, he says, she says, I, they went to get refreshments. And he's like, well, that was the wrong thing to say. Also, Feyre, nobody's walking. It's not like this is some party out in the woods where everyone has red solo cups. <laughs> There doesn't need to be any food or, or you know, fucking read between the lines. God, that would be <laughs> so funny, though. Any- they were just walking around with red solo cups and, like, plastic plates of food. <laughs> oh, my God. And, like, a keg or something. This is definitely what I was thinking of. <laughs> God. And so he asks if she if he wants to escort her somewhere. And, of course, she's like, no. Good. <laughs> so at least those instincts are in. Stranger danger. Do not go with... Okay, because any time some dude is that alluring, mm. there has there ha- has to be something more there is all i have to say and like on top of that literally he scared away three fairies by like just standing there menacingly uh he has to be well known <laughs> or something yeah mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden he's offering like to escort her somewhere that's almost like hey i saved you you want to give me back a favor it's like uh, no <laughs> no thanks she, she asked she's like of course this is kind of a dumb question though on her part but she's like so you're not part of the spring court he's like do i look like i'm part of the spring court <laughs> as if he takes like so much offense to that he said no i'm not part of the noble spring court and i'm glad of it the noble yeah. spring court i can totally imagine like and probably you can reinforce that with the uh, graphic audio knowledge but it's like mm-hmm. the noble like saying the noble spring court like ridiculing them almost jealous in a way i would say either jealous or like mocking a mix mm-hmm. of both maybe though he definitely oh, this is definitely where i was like oh okay sir he says all the monsters have been let out of their cages tonight no matter what court they belong to see i may roam wherever i wish until dawn basically saying that he's a monster great uh, and that he has been quote unquote let out great. um wow i don't know who you are but like that didn't give me any like hope in yeah that's <laughs> us okay but the fact that he just leaves that's what gets me i'm like okay so this guy just came in saved her gave her some weird comments and then was like okay have I'm fun out. <laughs> it's like okay Okay. It's like, okay, okay. That would have been my cue to leave. I like that would have been my cue to go mm-hmm. and leave. <laughs> so you already survived like barely like getting out of three uh fairies like forcing themselves on you. And then you mm-hmm. get saved by this mysterious stranger who then offers to escort you somewhere, but is just like also kind of mocking the spring court and then just mm-hmm. wanders away. Like that's definitely like, okay, that's enough for one night. So obviously she starts kind of shaking and obviously she's scared at this point and so she's walking 
walking through, but and guess who does she make eye contact with? Of course, it's Lucian. Yeah, <laughs> at least it wasn't Tamlin. If anything, honestly, Lucian probably would have been the best person to get at because he has the bright red hair, the golden mm-hmm. eye. Like, he's easily spottable. Yeah. But the fact that he makes eye contact with her widens his eyes in shock. Even his metal eye widens. He runs her, he books her back to the house. He doesn't even have time. He's like, he's like, what the hell? Have you lost your senses? What are you doing here? And before she can even say <laughs> anything, he picks her up so in like the, the Shrek carry. And she's, like, she's just so confused. Like, wait, I need to get my horse. It's like, that is the least of your concerns right now. Just fucking leave. Just pan no. <laughs> it's funny to see Lucian kind of going through all the stages of grief. He's like, he is panicking. He's yeah. like, hey, what the? Oh my God. You're idiot. Useless. Jesus Christ. Stupid. The human. He's like, okay, didn't someone tell you to stay in your room? It's like, it, oh, so he's just freaking out. He's like, by the cauldron, if Tam found you there, she's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> well, clearly no one has told her. And so this is one of those moments where, of course, no one fucking told me anything. If they did, do you think I would have been there? I mean, there's a potential she might have. Ah, uh, with what it is, probably not, but maybe I feel a like, though, bit. like, maybe she would have at least, like, left her room still. Because I feel like those drums are pretty enticing. Yeah. Enticing. But yeah, maybe you're right. She wouldn't have, like, actually gone all the way there. Well, I even like it how during this whole conversation, though, with Lucian, he, it feels kind of painful. It don't, like, in a way, his face is kind of pained that he's so far away from it. Mm-hmm. And I think they're supposed to be a part of it. Yeah. Um, so, of course, we get the full explanation. Finally. <laughs> the uncomfortable first. <laughs> so, it's the fire night is the official start of spring. And Prithian are as, and as well is in the mortal world. So, mm, how they regenerate their crops with magic. Of they can It can't be the normal great, farming. Mm, definitely not. Conducting the great rite. Each of the seven high lords of Prithian perform this each year. Since their magic comes from the earth and returns it to the end. Okay, so get on with it. What is it? It's like, so uh, Tamlin lets in magic into his body and he becomes the hunter with his sole purpose of finding the maiden. And of course, Lucian, Lucian's like that parent trying to explain sex to the kid. <laughs> the birds and the bees and, and it's like, go ask your father. It's like, so <clears throat> from their coupling, um, magic will be released and uh, will regenerate for the year to come. Bingo, bingo. Like, uh, magic is here for the next year. She's like, what? Couple? <laughs> you mean the guy that I've been flirting with for the past couple months, like weeks, months, however long I've been here is coupling <laughs> with another female tonight? Can I just tell you how Feyre, okay, she doesn't balk from the whole explanation. She's just like, well, wait, who's the maiden? <laughs> That's what you're worried about? Yeah, clearly. She's like, well, who's she gonna who's she gonna have sex with? <laughs> So apparently all those women that were there were all people that Tamlin could have chose. They were lined which is up kind of, for his choosing. Which is kind of insane. Uh, but again, Tamlin is kind of a celebrity in sorts because all of those High Lords, anybody would have wanted to sleep with a High Lord. Like basically sleeping with, you know, one of the members of BTS. You know, <laughs> you know since yeah, there's seven like... of them, I had to do that, you know. <laughs> of course. That's fine. <laughs> Um, don't I mean, you it, it, it'd, be, it'd be the case for both of us in that sense um, I don't know. but yeah it's definitely like oh he's like this all powerful high lord person like this all powerful like person he's probably gonna be pretty good in bed anyone wants a chance with that at least yeah. oh hell yeah like I think that's why she doesn't walk from the whole other explanation <laughs> so and so she's like well why are you guys there <laughs> it's like oh well, you know Lucian's like oh well we get our pickings after Tamlin gets his so Tamlin gets, or what is it, Lucian gets a free night to just shag somebody. <laughs> and she's like, wait, so that's why those guys... Okay, not saying that's giving them an out for what they did, obviously. No, no. no consent at all, but at the same time, it's, okay, I get why they maybe thought she was... Because mm-hmm. if, if if you're saying blanketly that every girl there is up for sex, it makes sense on their part to think that, but also, again, we're not gonna be like, oh, well, I understand why they did it. No, they're assholes, that's stupid, you know, that was a fuck up saying <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it makes sense now so 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 i have it you're lucky i found you when i did though because he would have smelled you and claimed you but it wouldn't have been tamlin who brought you into that cave and i don't think you would have liked it tonight is not for <clears throat> love making excuse me so basically it, well no actually no it's not it's it definitely gave me that but and it's so it's what i mean obviously this is a more extreme version of some of those scenes again this is what got me hooked this right here <laughs> is what got me hooked because
because it turns on the head and again Sarah wow um the whole you know when you're when the guy best friend says oh no he really likes you this is that kind of thing where it's like he legitimately his base instinct his base his base man instinct is to find her because of his feelings for her yeah and obviously because he likes her a lot of course she'd be the one he would seek after Mm -hmm. if he even like barely smelled her because metaphorically you're almost like taking away the i mean obviously it's a little bit feral and animalistic in a way but i don't like to think of it exactly like that it's very just pure you're taking away all the the other barriers and you're just thinking base instinct about like what you are feeling for that person Mm -hmm. and so the fact that he's thinking that about her kind of throws her off guard but at the same time she likes it she's totally into it it's 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 not like she ew gross but she's like oh he 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 wants me i think that kind of goes back a little bit to what we said in like first uh, episode of like Mm -hmm. it's great that she's not a virgin like she uh has had sex before she's redded before which it definitely is what it sounds like tamlin is doing um redding for the sake of magic for someone's cornfield um um to put it bluntly oh you took me off guard with that okay continue that was good that was good but so it's like so she's not like scared of the idea of like sex really i get what you mean i get what you mean is that not what it is no i just i've never heard you say that before but it was just it's like okay yeah i mean i you fucking you're a fucking mountain person i didn't think you'd make a cornfield reference <laughs> this is what happens when you go to when you go to college in indiana you start making cornfield references yeah because that's all we got here anyway moving on. <laughs> so I like how, again, how comedic it is, though, that when the drums stop and there's a pulse of magic in the air, she immediately is like, well, that means he finished. And I'm thinking to myself, wow. Uh, finished so hard that I, uh, that the music had to stop. Oh my god, that's so blunt. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my god, I dig that. <laughs> kind of funny. That's, a, that's very funny, because she's like, uh, I can't think too much of why that pulse of magic happened, because that means finished. Okay, no, 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 I'm not gonna think about it. <laughs> oh, so she has the brilliant idea of being like, well, I want a cookie now. <laughs> to recap, she's been waiting in her room now. Lucian has yes. previously left. Mm-hmm. Dude, okay, she deserved this. She deserved what happened in the last of this chapter. Like, oh, I she thought you meant she deserved the cookie. No, 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 no. She deserves to have what happens to her happen to her because she was told multiple times to not come out of her room. And even after being explained for once, like, what the actual event was, she still came out dude what if dude she was probably she probably meant for that to happen she wanted to run into him to just see how much he how feral he was what a kinky and oh bitch. boy did she get it <laughs> such a kinky bitch i know so so again she's like roaming the halls and of course she's thinking to herself well tamlin is a high lord and it's a great honor i suppose he's handsome and she's like well i bet i guess the woman was probably beautiful definitely jealousy going on here and a little bit of her breath nature coming out oh definitely and so of course so she's like nibbling on the cookie and then all of a sudden just an, the presence a guy standing at the end of the hall it's tamlin dun, dun, dun. Like, his eyes are full black like you know i was actually describing this to my dad remember in finding nemo when bruce the shark would like smell blood oh, yeah yeah the black eyes that's what i'm thinking of yeah <laughs> whenever i think of this it's like tamlin full feral <laughs> and of course she's what the fuck she doesn't even bother she's like of course midnight snack going out and what the f- she just tried to brush past him like nothing happened and then <laughs> of course he uh so i don't want to call myself out too much here but he pushes her up against the wall <laughs> So she has a height thing, and then she also has a wall thing. Oh, don't worry, bitch. We'll get into the stuff you like later. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> no, that's the whole we're calling thing. we're calling me out right now, but we'll get to her stuff. So don't worry. <laughs> well, I'm gonna pretend but, that and get to my stuff. Yeah, let's just call continuously call me out. Uh-huh. But, so he's like, I smelled you. I searched for you, and you weren't there. He said you drove me mad, and you weren't there when I didn't find you. It made me pick another. <laughs> she said, I currently es- I couldn't escape, but I wasn't sure I entirely wanted to. It's like, uh, yeah. uh, you kinky bitch. Like, I love this. I love what's going on. <laughs> and then, whoa, sure. we, this is definitely where we get Tamlin at his most, like, I don't want to, I don't want to say base male instinct, but more like, okay, this guy is just being blunt with her at this point. Mm-hmm. Like, she asked me not to be gentle with her. I would have been gentle with you, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know about that, though. Well, 
I mean, maybe, maybe because he does, because they have this, how do I say? I think it's like a metaphor for because they've liked each other and because they've built this friendship is that mm. definitely the first time would have been more of a loving instead of a like rutting situation. But also like the and magic course, was taking like, over so, him. Well, not if they, if they shagged right there, of course, probably not. <laughs> it probably wouldn't have been. But she, he's like, you know, I would have taken a very, very long time. It's like, <laughs> okay, sir. Okay. <laughs> making everyone else wait dude and then again this is again where i was just hooked dude i'm not gonna lie <laughs> she's like she goes she does her brat nature and she's like why would i want someone's leftovers and she pushes him off and then she tries to leave and he bites her on the neck <gasps> <laughs> what it's just, just, it's just all me okay this is all me this is all okay this i'm i'm embodying favor here okay <laughs> And the thing is, she doesn't hate it. Again, so I'm not going to call out my friend. I'm not going to call her out on camera. But <laughs> I think my my friend was a little bit, she's like, oh, this is weird. That I, I mean, she just wasn't into this. And I get it. I understand. But she wasn't, she was digging it. She, there, was, it there wasn't like this, like, you know, non-consent thing going on. She was like, actually, I'm kind of into this. I feel like she definitely could have, like, pushed Tam off more, like, immediately after the bite. Well, because the thing is, <laughs> well, first of all, he says, don't ever disobey me again. And I'm thinking to myself oh wow was that so much um yeah don't tell me what to do <laughs> <laughs> and of course she's like I wanted him everywhere now it's like <laughs> god damn it though I will say that when he I think it's a telltale sign though for him the fact that he he still walked away even after biting her I think it shows how much control he did mm-hmm. actually have because he honestly wanted their first time to be like more mi- love making I think yeah I think I mean again that's like the romance aspect of it being like oh well I think the reason that happened and because he walked away was because he knew things were getting too intense and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This wasn't going to be the night to do that. Yeah. Oh, so, wow, wow, wow. Uh, <laughs> you understand why this is our favorite part, or well, at least one of our favorite moments in this whole fucking thing. I, I also like it because it's the first, I don't want to say sexual encounter, because it's obviously not. It was definitely I mean, the first scene that like made me blush. <laughs> It's sexual encounter, but it's not necessarily sex. Sexual tension. Oh, 100%. I'm thinking like, okay, they have to bang in like the next chapter, right? Like, I'm not <laughs> well, the only I'm one. Got it come soon, right? So anyway, I'm really glad. I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as we did. Called each other out a lot during this. Mostly her. <laughs> and I'll probably get payback for that later. Yeah, mostly me, but okay. <laughs> Whatever. We're so happy and, uh, you know, so excited to get comments and everything like that um, about everything. We finally finally got to 100 listens i don't know if everybody saw it but we got 100 listens so i wanted to personally thank everybody who's listened so far it makes us so happy that we're able to connect like this because mm-hmm. i also wanted to i mean the reason we started this in general was to you know i don't know make people laugh smile cry mm-hmm. whatever through these books and i i just i think I'm, we're getting that so again share it with anybody who you think will like this and like us or you know anything like that so yeah uh we'll see some of you in the next episode the next mini episode um yeah comment down below if you what you want to see for the mini episodes we want suggestions that you'd like to hear we've definitely decided to go more along the lines of a specific topic since more people seem to like that yeah and we'll see some of you in the next main episode but we did also want to say we decided that uh like sort of our halfway we will have a youtube live going on november 4th so we'll have more specifics uh, along the way for that Mm -hmm. but so again it won't be on spotify or anything it also be specifically on youtube and it'll of course be free for everybody so if you want a q a we're gonna do some fun trivia questions or we're gonna play you know, some you games sing, you're gonna see our wonderful faces yeah so we're really <laughs> really excited about that we thought a little change of pace would be fun so again thank you so much and i really hope you like this do you want to say anything to the people before we go thank you so much for listening we love you mm-hmm. yes love you guys too Bye-bye. bye bye